Hello, is it me you're looking for? I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your... Do you know the song? All right, draw bearing and all that stuff. Put back in, sealed. Message delivered. Lincoln truck back up. If you go back and watch my short, uh, you'll see how I got uh, the ring gear installed. Um, I went ahead and cleaned up the clutch, uh, brake cleaned it all out, wire brushed, uh, and then uh, lightly buffed it with a medium roll lock wheel. Looks pretty nice, nice and dry. And it doesn't have to be perfect because when the uh, clutch goes back in there, this is. Uh, slightly buffed a little bit so it has a unique surface that has unique surface that has unique surface so they actually uh, burn into each other and uh, grip a little easier than it was so now I just need a clutch alignment tool and I can put this clutch and clutch pressure plate back on so here we are installing the clutch and the universal tool that I'm using the pilot uh, that fits this is inch. Uh, the shoulder though of this originally was inch and three sixteenths. Uh, problem is, is that the clutch ID, uh, when you go to pull it out, the uh, ID of it is inch and eighth. It would have never been able to pull out once I've installed it. So I had to machine off the shoulder of this in order to be able to pull the universal tool out once the clutch is installed. So we'll stick the tapered part of this in here. Uh, align the clutch. So right here, we're going to go ahead and bring in the diaphragm and get the bolts lined up to get it started. And then I'll get all the bolts put in and start to suck this in. So now here's the critical part. I'm using the tapered piece to center up the clutch as best I can and push in real hard. And then I will start to use the bolts and suck in the diaphragm real tight, uh, therefore holding the clutch in place. Uh, as soon as I get a few of these bolts sucked in real tight, and I know it's not going to go anywhere, then I'll go ahead and take the centering piece off and I'll go around and run the rest of these bolts in and then torque them. And if I wouldn't machine the shoulder off of this tool, then I never would have been able to get the tool back out once I got to this point. So that's why I had to mill down that shoulder. Went ahead and resealed the side cover. Resealed the O-ring for the distributor and replaced the valve cover gasket. And here's my absolute favorite part, sealing the message in the bottle for the next technician to find. Uh, whether it be the engine or the transmission that comes out, he's going to find it. So right here I slowed it down so you can see there's a from this perspective, you can see the engine is slightly tilted and this will make it really hard to put in on the motor mounts. So I have another um, come along going down to another eyelet that I put on the side of the motor on the rear. And I'll use this to pull up the back side of the motor to square it up. That way I can slide in the motor onto the transmission and onto the motor mounts all at the same time, just making my life slightly easier. Not a big deal when you're pulling the motor out, Put the motor back in, you want it slightly more square. Raise your hand if you've been here before. It's uh, super fun putting the motor in by yourself. There's a lot of up, down, wiggle, 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 up, down, wiggle, wiggle. And I went ahead and got a few of the bell housing bolts put in, secure the transmission uh, to the engine, because the transmission actually hangs off the end of it here. Uh, that way I can take the jack out from underneath and then set the engine down on the motor mounts.
Well, she's back in. What's really funny is with the new mount, we look really close to lined up. As soon as I cinch it down. Didn't get super far this week, just wanted to give you a little bit of an update of where we're currently standing with this project.